Hello friends and welcome back to Kurt Berglund's Baseball World. I've received a lot of questions lately about tournament setup and how I score a game, how I keep myself organized, and I'm certainly not an expert in any of these areas. But in this video, I'm going to show you what I do to set up a small tournament, sort of the things that I look for, the problems that I always, the hurdles that I sort of always need to um, plan for. And then uh, I'm going to get into showing you how uh, I go about scoring a game. The ne I'm going to do another video in about a week that is going to go through another set of questions that I've received lately. And that is, how do I set up the King of the Hill tournaments? And so I'm going to break down the structure of what I do for a King of the Hill tournament in case uh, it would provoke some uh, creative thought on your part uh, for something that you might want to do along those lines. So look for that, that's coming up. But today it's tournament structure and scoring a game, staying organized and all that uh, good kind of stuff. Before we start, uh, I have to say that I have tried a um, couple of dozen different score sheets in my time in this uh, baseball cards and dice hobby, and I have not found uh, a better system than buying composition notebooks and keeping projects in the composition notebooks, everything there. Now, here's what I look for in a composition notebook. First thing I do is uh, you can pay, there's a whole range of prices that you can pay for composition notebooks. But what I do is I go to Target uh, and I wait for the composition notebooks that they have to be on sale and they are as low as 50 cents a notebook. For that, you get 80 or a hundred pages inside the notebook. What I do is I buy 100 page composition notebooks because I can fit an entire season or multiple tournaments inside that notebook with room for statistics. And uh, if I wanna keep notes, jot notes to myself, uh, do some planning, I can write all of that in the notebook and it stays all right here. There's no loose pages, there's no separate sheets. I don't have to worry about losing anything. It's all bound securely and I can put it on the bookshelf and it is ready to go for me whenever I want. And best of all, I get a 100 page uh, notebook means potentially 200 score sheets for the price of 50 cents. My printer doesn't work that cheap. Uh, so it's a wonderful bargain as well as uh, handy in all the other ways too. So I start out with a composition notebook. This one I have labeled 1952. All of my 1952 deep drive uh, stuff is going in here. And so I'm gonna show, and I started uh, in this notebook with a tournament with the 1952 card set. I'm gonna show you what that looks like and then I'm gonna show you how I score a game. So let's take a look. All right, so here is one of the early pages in my composition notebook. And what I have done, as you can see, is I have set up the American League tournament here in 1952. There were 16 teams, eight per league. And so what I did in very un, uh, original style here, is I set up a seeding process based on the team's records. And you can see that um, what I do here is I put the winner of that first series on this line and then their margin of victory in the game. So in this case, the Yankees won two games, they lost one. The Senators won their series against the Kansas City Athletics uh, oh no, it'd be the Philadelphia Athletics, excuse me, in 1952, it'd be the Philadelphia Athletics. The Senators won that series two games to one. 
The White Sox won their series over the Red Sox, two games to none. And the Indians beat the St. Louis Browns in their series, two games to none. Now, what I would do is to extend these out for the quarterfinal matchups within the American League tournament and continue. Now, when I set up a tournament in the series that very rarely, very rarely do I do a seven game series. And the reason for that is simply because I don't wanna mess around with fifth starters. So what I, you'll see me do is to do a best of three series like I did in this. In the next round, it's gonna be best three out of five. What that does, what three out of five does, is it allows me to use a four-man rotation. If I get out to a best of seven series, now I've got a whole lot of logistical problems that I don't wanna mess with. Namely, do I go with a three-man rotation or a four-man rotation? And under what circumstances can I break a four-man rotation down to a three-man rotation? I don't wanna mess with any of that. So I go with three or five game series and just go from there. If I need, if I decide that I need a longer series, what I do is a best of nine, because in that case, I can use four man rotations without any problem. And then if the series does go nine games, I just come back with my first starters in that ninth game. All right, now let's take a look at how I set up a score sheet and what I do to keep score. Okay, so what you're seeing in front of you is a first round game of this American League tournament that I put together. Very simple tournament. There's a million better ways to put together an eight team tournament than just doing a win seeding situation, but that's what I did. Um, so what you see is in the upper left-hand corner, uh, I think you can see R1G1. So I'm indicating there that that is the round one, game one of this series. I have put the um, victory totals of the teams in this game right there in the top. So you see by the Tigers, uh, their record was 50 and 104. The Yankees were 55 and 95 and 59. Across the top in this notebook page, uh, I put the uh, the runs in scored in each inning. So I go by three inning chunks: one, two, three, space; one, two, three, space; one, two, three, and then the totals for the ball game. Um, so then you look uh, down the left column, and we have the Tigers starting lineup. Uh, for some sims, I find it helpful down the left margin to put range or error ratings. Plenty of room there to do it. Um, if I don't need those, I don't use the space for that. I'll explain what I use with that in just a minute. Um, so very basic symbols here. So this would be a single uh, growth advances to second base. I put a dot there and then he scores. There is a uh, filled in rectangle to indicate that he scored. Uh, sacrifice bunt, double RBI and later a run scored. Uh, strikeout, you'll notice that uh, because I do videos, I find it helpful to put the number of strikeouts for the pitcher as sort of a sub number uh, next to the K. So for example, this is Allie Reynolds starting for the Yankees. His last strikeout is here. He has four strikeouts on the day. Okay, sacrifice fly with an RBI. Pretty straightforward. Substitutions, pitching substitutions. Uh, relief pitchers get a uh, horizontal line. Pinch hitters get a vertical line to indicate, or uh, here, so Mapes pinch hits for Billy Heft. Uh, he gets a line here. 
then, um, no, I'm sorry, Billy Heft comes into pitch uh, during the bottom of the seventh, so I put a line here, then Mapes pinch hits for him, I put a line here, and there's Mapes pinch hit result. So the Yankees brought in one, two, three, four relievers in the game. If the game goes into extra innings, I've got room over here, 10, 11, 12, maybe even 13. And the reason that I sometimes don't put range or error numbers down the left margin is so that I can put more extra innings over here uh, should I need them. All right, so there's the Tigers uh, part of the, of the um, score sheet. And here comes the Yankees. So for the Yankees, um, same basic idea. Now, below the pitcher, I didn't talk about this with the Tigers, but you'll see below Allie Reynolds, I've got tally marks there. There are some sims like Status Pro. Uh, and certainly deep drive, where you need to track pitcher fatigue. The tally marks are how I track that. Uh, you also see that I made a mistake in the first inning. Mickey Mantle did not score. I, I, Yogi Berra was up, so Mantle hits a triple. Yogi Berra comes up. He grounds out to first. I thought Mantle would automatically score. He did not. So I crawled, made an X through the mantle box that showed him scoring, and I made an X through the Barra RBI. Now, you'll also see uh, batting sixth is Bob Serve. Uh, I made a double switch in the fourth inning, so I brought in Ewell Blackwell. Uh, to pitch, and I put him in the six spots. You'll see Blackwell's name above serve. Blackwell PT4 means he came in to pitch in the fourth, top of the fourth. And the double switch was for Gene Woodling to come in uh, and bat ninth. You'll see his name above Allie Reynolds. LFT4, left field, top of the fourth. And then you'll see the vertical lines. So this is where serves day ends and Blackwell's starts in the sixth spot in the order. And then down here, you'll see that Gene Woodling's uh, day starts here. But then Blackwell batted once in the bottom of the fifth, he struck out. and brought in a new pitcher, Bob Miller. I think it's Bob Miller uh, in the sixth. And here's what I do in these situations where there is too much, too many names to write in the same spot. So I wrote in Miller uh, there, um, and then I ran a parenthetical bat sixth, Miller PT6. He's pitching in the top of the sixth. Uh, and then Jim Bridewezer pinch hit for him in the seventh. So Miller actually was in here. This is Miller's vertical line. Here comes Bridewezer's vertical line. This is Bridewezer's pinch hit, but he didn't stay in the game. Bob Kuzava came in to pitch in the top of the eighth. He batted sixth as well. So there's Kuzava's vertical line. And later, Johnny Sane came in to pitch, still batting sixth in the ninth inning. Uh, there's Sane's vertical line. So when you have a lot of clutter here, I use the space below. And that's important because what I do uh, when I shop for composition notebooks, I'm looking for college ruled notebooks so I get extra lines. So let's take a look at the, um, let's pull back here a little bit and take a look at how the uh, pitchers worked out for the Yankees. All right, so 
if we zoom in as best we can here, here's Sane's ninth inning. He got through it. And then down here, um, it's a uh, one, two, three, ninth inning against White. So White closes it out. Sane would have batted fourth in the inning or Sane's spot. They would have pinch hit for him. And that's it. So what you get here is pretty much in this single game, you get a pretty good look at all of the things that could happen um, on a score sheet and why, I mean, I'm making notes here. Uh, I'm indicating the winning pitcher, which in, in uh, this case, the Tigers a pretty good size upset, but Gray wins game one. And then down here, we see that Reynolds loses game one. Uh, the line scores across the top, nine runs, 16 hits for the Tigers. They committed two errors. The, the Yankees, four runs, seven hits, and no errors. I indicated an MVP over on the side. I made Walt Dropo the MVP. Uh, but you've got plenty of room here for notes and anything else you want to mark down. Uh, and I think it works. It, for me, it works really well. Uh, and I guess that pretty much covers. Oh, and we have a couple of errors here. So we have an error, two errors on Johnny Pesky uh, in the game. One committed here and then another one committed in the seventh. All right, so that's what these score sheets uh, look like when you keep them in a composition notebook. And so we finish where we started, and that is with a look at the uh, tournament. So what will happen as I run these, and this is my own thing, maybe you like to do it a different way, but I'll go game, 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 game rather than do a whole series, then do a whole series, then do a whole series, then do a whole series. The reason I do that, apart from uh, when I may do injuries, which could impact some different things, um, the big reason for that is that I don't want to give one team or another an advantage. In other words, uh, it may affect pitching decisions if I know too much, if I get one series too far out in front of the rest. And so I like to just go first game, first game, first game, first game, and so on. I also like to uh, keep the um, uh, best of number to three or five game series. It just makes that starting pitching decision much easier. You don't have to mess around with as many fourth and fifth starters, especially fifth starters. And there's less wiggle room. There's less decisions to make about skipping people in the rotation. And I don't like to make those decisions because nine times out of 10, I make the wrong choice, hurt the team. And it just goes better if you can go in order. All right, so we have in this video looked at a basic tournament setup and how I keep score. And I think you can see my reasoning behind using composition notebooks. Hope I've given you something to think about in terms of your own creativity in setting up your tournaments, maybe keeping score uh, and uh, maybe even saving yourself some money by finding yourself some uh, composition notebooks at a, at a discount. Oh, and another great place to find composition notebooks is at, is at uh, uh, used bookstores or like uh, Goodwill, places like that, St. Vincent de Paul. They're trying to give them away. And you can help them out by picking them up for even less than 50 cents a book. Uh, so I hope this has been good. Let me know if you have comments or questions in the comments below the video. Don't forget to check out channel membership 
Lots of goodies for you in channel membership on my channel. Have a wonderful evening. Time to roll some dice. Get out those dice. Get out some teams and enjoy. Have a good night. So long, everybody.